Let's investigate the effect of color of light on refraction. First, we need some terminology to help us. Color is a qualitative variable, meaning we use a word to describe it. Here we have red, green, purple. But in an investigation, it's much easier if we have quantitative measurements, not qualitative. In other words, if we can rather use numbers, because then we can draw graphs. So instead of using the description of color, let's rather use use the wavelength of light associated with that color. Because also anyway, there are many shades of red and many shades of green and violet and any color. But if we rather use the wavelength, for example, 700 nanometers or 559 nanometers, 382 nanometers, that describes a very particular color, as well as it being a number, a quantitative measurement. So here we can see light of different wavelengths, different colors, being shone by a light source through one medium, hitting a boundary between two media and entering a second medium. And in all cases, the light is then bent, it is refracted. Some of it is also reflected, but for now we're going to to ignore that. So now the issue that we want to investigate is does it make a difference which color of light you use? Does that affect how much the light is bent or not? We're going to investigate this in two different ways. First of all, we're going to look at the effect of color on angle of refraction. And later, we're going to look at the effect of color on extent of refraction, because these two things don't mean the same thing. But let's start with the effect of color on angle of refraction. So we're going to change the color of light that we use. So what is our independent variable? Remember, we're going to use the quantitative form of this, so you shouldn't write color. And what are we going to measure to check? whether that affects something else. Fill in these caps. So I hope what you wrote is, how does wavelength of light affect angle of refraction? So what do we need to control between our various treatments? So our treatments are going to differ in wavelength of light. In what way should they be the same to make it a fair test? I hope you realize that we need to control the media that the light moves between and the angle of incidence. We can choose whatever we like as long as we're consistent with this. For this particular investigation, we're going to make light travel from air to glass in all cases. And we're going to choose an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. Now we need a table. Remember our question is, how does wavelength of light, that's our independent variable, affect angle of refraction, that's our dependent variable. We need to give the heading of the table, which can be given in the format table showing the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable for, and we give a little description of the context. Pause the movie until you've filled all of that in. And then what headings do we need in the table? The first column must be for the independent variable and the second for the dependent. So hopefully this is what you gave. Table showing the relationship between wavelength of light and angle of refraction for light moving from air to glass with angle of incidence theta 1 of 30 degrees. And our first heading is wavelength, unit is nanometers, and our second column's heading is angle of refraction, and the unit is degrees. So now we need to decide on some wavelengths that we're going to vary between the treatments. We can choose whatever we like, and this is what I've chosen. So I'm going to use violet light of wavelength 382 nanometers. So that's the shortest wavelength that I'm going to use. And then blue, green, orange, and red light. So the longest wavelength that I'm going to use is 700 nanometer, and that is red light. And for each, I'm going to measure the angle of refraction when I have an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. I'm not going to change the angle of incidence because that must be a controlled variable in this particular investigation. So now I'm going to open my simulation. So I'm using the bending light FET simulation. I'm going to choose more tools. One of the variables that I'm controlling is which media the light is moving between. And what I chose was the light's going to move from air to glass. So I'm not going to change that from the default. I'm going to put in the angles. I have the normal showing already. And then remember I said that 
I want an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. I obviously have to put the light on first. So there I have the light and I'm going to move it until I have 30 degrees angle of incidence. So I'm not going to change the angle of incidence from the setting here. I don't need to put a protractor in because of course the program is already giving me the angles. But let's put a protractor in anyway and we make sure that the origin of the protractor is at the point where the incident ray strikes the boundary between the media and the 90 degree readings lie along the boundary. So the zero degree readings are on the normal line. And then you can see that indeed the angle of incidence is 30 degrees. We have a reflected ray as well being reflected off the boundary between the media. You will always get some of the light being reflected and the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. It's 30 degrees. But for now we're going to try to ignore that because for this investigation we're not interested in reflection but in refraction. So we focus on the refracted ray and in this particular case the angle of refraction is 19,5 degrees. But we haven't actually started our investigation yet. So let us move the slider here all the way to the violet, 380 nanometers. So that's going to be our smallest wavelength. And we read off our angle of refraction and it is 19,2 degrees. Next, we want blue light with a wavelength of 450 nanometers. So we move the slider until we have blue light, 450 nanometers. We read off the angle of refraction, 19 comma three degrees. Now we want green light of wavelength 550 nanometers, angle of refraction 19,4 degrees. Orange light of 600 nanometers, angle of refraction 19,4 degrees. And our last reading, red light of 700 nanometers, angle of refraction 19,5 degrees. We put that all in our table and what do we notice? Our conclusion must answer our question, how does wavelength of light affect angle of refraction as shown by our data, our table here? So what is the answer to this question? We can give it in this format as independent variable is increased. The dependent variable does what? Now we can see that the change is very, very slight. If we were using the protractor rather than the inbuilt angle display, we wouldn't even have noticed the change. So that's why I've added in slightly. So finish off that statement. So that it's correct and what you should have written is as wavelength of light is increased angle of refraction increases slightly. We can see here our smallest wavelength 382 is associated with the smallest angle of refraction 19,2 and our biggest wavelength 700 nanometers is associated with our biggest reading of angle of refraction 19,5. So as the one is increased the other one increases too but slightly. Now we need to look at this in a slightly different way to help us to understand refraction better. Instead of now looking at the effect of color on angle of refraction. Let's rather look at the extent of refraction. So let's just change the focus question slightly. And now we're asking how does wavelength of light affect extent of refraction? So notice we've just changed this word here before we said affect angle of refraction. Now we want extent of refraction. Now what's the difference between those two? This was the data we got when we were asking about angle of refraction. It's still relevant for answering this question extent of refraction. How does wavelength of light affect extent of refraction? But now we have to interpret the data a little differently because in both investigations we have the same independent variable wavelength of light but now our dependent variable is extent of refraction not angle of refraction. Now we still need to use angle of refraction as our indicator to tell us about this variable. We cannot measure extent of refraction directly. We need an indicator to help us to understand extent of refraction and that indicator is angle of refraction just as before it was. But the interpretation of the indicator is now different. What do I mean? Let's take two examples to understand the difference between angle of refraction and extent of refraction better. So here I have violet light 
light traveling from air to glass, and here I have red light traveling from air to glass. And we can see that although the angles of incidence are the same in both cases, the angles of refraction are not the same. Here the angle of refraction is 19,2 degrees and there the angle of refraction is 19,5 degrees. Obviously, which number is bigger? 19,5. So the angle of refraction is bigger on the right. But if we ask ourselves, in which case did the light get bent more? We must think about about what's happened to this light. Instead of it going straight through, it's been bent towards the normal. Which of these two has been bent more? Can you see that the violet light was bent more? It's been bent further from the straight position. The straight position would have been 30 degrees angle of refraction. And it's been bent away from 30 more than the red light was. So in this particular case, the small number 19,2 actually represents more more bending than the big number does. So if we ask the question, how does wavelength of light affect extent of refraction? We need to interpret our measurement, angle of refraction, which is our indicator of extent of refraction. We need to interpret it correctly. And in this particular case, we need to interpret it sort of like the other way around. What do I mean? You write here in the next column, extent of refraction. Which number shows the biggest extent of refraction? Is it 19,2 or is it 19,5? Where was more refraction, more bending away from the straight line occurring. There was more bending for the violet light where the angle of refraction was a smaller number and less bending for the red light where the angle of refraction was a bigger number. So if our question is how does wavelength of light affect extent of refraction, what is our answer? And I hope you gave, as wavelength of light is increased, extent of refraction decreases slightly. Because here we have the highest wavelength, 700 nanometers, being associated with the lowest extent of refraction. Now for a straight barrier, as for this investigation, by eye you can't actually even see the difference as we change the color of light. It doesn't very obviously change the extent of refraction. We can notice by looking at the number given to us, yes, okay. Um, it is changing but very, very slightly. However, if we use a triangular prism where the two sides are at angles to one another to emphasize this effect, then you start to notice the difference between the extent of refraction of the different colors of light. And that is why a triangular prism separates white light into its colors. Because the red light is refracted less. It goes more straight through the prism and the violet light gets refracted the most. It gets bent most by the prism and then the other colors in between, spreading the colors out to make the spectrum. You can investigate this using the prism tool within the bending light simulation. So we can put a triangular prism there. Let's use white light. You can put the light on and you can see that, let's move this up just to give us more space. You can see that the light is being spread out into its color. Colors. And the reason for that is because the different wavelengths of light are refracted to different extents. And so they get bent differently, separating them apart.